So I'm a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for seven years. Um, I have a neurologic clinical specialty in neuro rehab through my um, governing body. I work for my, predominantly out of a PAL YMCA satellite, and I have no disclosures. Um, objectives are to identify the body systems and structures that relate to effectively maintaining balance. Look at some current evidence for um, physical therapy and balance, and then identify some newer evidence that's come out um, at the end of last year. We'll look at different subsets of balance and vestibular function in order to comprehensively evaluate motor control of movement more than just thinking of balance as a um, single system. And identify potential benefits of customized balance and vestibular programs and then identify some potential interventions for treating dysfunction. <clears throat> Every smarter people than me have taught you about multiple sclerosis, so let's move on from there. Um, adequate balance in vestibular function, it requires an effective interaction between multiple motor and sensory systems, and it has to be efficient and collaborative in order to effectively maintain balance. Consequences of MS on the central nervous system affects the efficiency and the ability of these systems to collaborate together. Systems involved, so if we kind of divide them into input systems, processing and integration systems, and motor output systems, um, variety of different inputs coming um, through the sensory systems. They're processed in the central nervous system and they come out as motor output through the central and the peripheral neural pathways. And so this is a grossly simplified schematic of um, how these different systems are interacting, where they're going, where they're being processed and where they're coming out in order to produce this overall um, function of being balanced. So MS symptoms and their clinical prevalence, fatigue, very high. Um, the ones we'll talk about today, dizziness and vertigo, um, and difficulty with walking, just being imbalanced while you're walking. Now, everything goes into being balanced. Fatigue, you're less balanced when you're fatigued. When you have heat sensitivity and you're outside, it affects your balance. So there's a large component that all of these play. So current literature for physical interventions related to imbalance. <clears throat> so various modes of exercise have been shown, and this comes from systematic review of the physical therapy literature, and it's sensory and motor training is effective, resistive and aerobic exercise is effective, and then neurotherapeutic approaches. This is like um, using motor learning theory to promote the principles of neuroplasticity. Um, and so those approaches are beneficial in regards to significantly improving balance and reducing fall risk. Same thing with vestibular rehabilitation. Um, Cawthorn Cooksey exercises, they're still relevant. They were developed in the 40s, but they um, show significant improvements. Uh, standard motor sensory development programs, uh, standard balance exercises have been effective. And then there's good literature on visual feedback virtual reality for balance training. But the limitations in the evidence is that it's variety of evidence has only looked at standardized exercise programs. So everybody in the study is getting the same exercise program in order to maintain control. So <clears throat> it is not individualized. It's not specific, which has been the theme of um, the talk so far. The literature is sparse in regards to balance improvements and training in people with severe MS. It's just not well studied. And then most clinical testing that we use in the clinic is testing a single balance system. However, functionally, we know um, balance is achieved through an interaction of all these systems and information flowing seamlessly um, between the systems. So it, the clinical testing is not, maybe not as relevant in regards to how it actually works physiology. So um, at the end of 2016, this study came out of Turkey. It was a customized vestibular rehabilitation is effective in patients with MS. It was a randomized controlled trial. They use vestibular rehabilitation um, inclusive in regards to balance and vestibular rehab. We kind of distinguish the two. There's balance exercises, there's vestibular exercises. They did both in the same thing. Um, it was to investigate the effects of customizing these balance programs because uh, studies previously had been focused at standardized um, programs. The outcome measures they were testing are, are related to balance, functional capacity, quality of life, and depression. They took 40 consecutive patients referred for with MS, and they randomized to an exercise in a control group. Their exercise program um, 
was one session a week with a therapist. Then it was one time a week they consulted with a physiatrist and a therapist in regards to what modifications needed to be made. And then they completed um, two sessions a week of the program they designed at home. So realistic in regards to services that are currently provided in regards to the protocol for it. Um, they took a lot of objective measures, which I like. They took a lot of objective balance testing measures. They did standard rhombergs and foams. They did posturography, which is looking at sway on um, force plates. They did a six meter walk test, and they also did um, some additional balance measures. They did a dizzy net. This handicap is a subjective test, as well as ABCs. They're all patient reported outcomes for dizziness and confidence with balance. Functional capacity test is your six minutes, how far you can walk in six minutes. They did a quality of life measure, and then they did a depression measure as well. So what they do, they did adaption exercises. These are um, training vestibular ocular reflex. So you're putting somebody in different positions. You're rotating your head. You're trying to work up to 120 beats. They're trying to improve the efficiency of the vestibular ocular reflex. Substitution exercises are where you're taking intact sensory systems and you're trying to make up for um, less functioning sensory systems. So if we have vestibular function, we're training um, sensation, uneven surfaces, that sort of thing. So we're trying to optimize the systems that are particularly intact. Balance exercise, that's pretty generic. They did sitting, they did static standing, and then they did dynamic where you're moving more. Habituation exercises for people who had positional dizziness or symptoms, and that is the monotonous repetition of the same sti stimulus. Person gets dizzy when they get up out of bed. You create a program of all the positions that are dizzy, and you move them through them five or six times, seven to eight times a day. Um, and you're dulling the response of the nervous system to those position changes. And then ambulation exercises. They used modifiers in this study. So uh, they changed the surface. They changed the base of support. They changed your arm position. They changed the dynamic portion of the exercise. And so they tried to make it challenging but doable and customize it to each um, participant. Um, so they came up with some results. No significant difference in the demographics between the groups. Um, significant improvements in the exercise group compared to the control in all the patient reported outcomes except tandem Romberg with eyes closed, that's uh, this heel to toe position, and then foam standing with eyes open. Of all the measures, if those are the ones that didn't get better, that's okay, I feel, because those are less functional than all of the additional measures. So if somebody can't stand like this, I'd say don't stand like that. <laughs> Intergroup comparisons of the differences indicated a significant improvement in favor of the exercise group in all parameters as well. And nobody got worse during the study. Um, here's the Romberg tests. Um, mean rank is on the um, y-axis there and then the different conditions. There was two insignificant results there and it was tandem and foam standing. These were all significant improvements exercise compared to the control. These were all the functional measures. They're like the dynamic gait index, the functional gait, their balance while walking, that sort of thing. These were all significant improvements compared to the control group. Functional capacity, this is uh, quality of life, and this is depression scaling, all significant improvements of functional measures. So it starts with evaluation for customizing and teaching somebody a customized home program that is unique to them. Biomechanical considerations have to be first. If the person has knee pain, we have to treat knee pain because when you step on a painful knee, you're imbalanced. Spasticity has to be addressed, joint range of motion, the orthopedic considerations in the neurologic patient. Limits of stability and verticality. Limits of stability, that's how far I can reach outside my base of support. Verticality is how I align to gravity. You can put somebody on a wedge, toes up, and if they're aligning back here and keep falling off the wedge, sensory impairment. So we need to treat the whole body's perception of where it is in space. So they should stand on a wedge and align with the wedge because that's where the balance is. Anticipatory postural reactions are like, if I'm going to step up on a curb, I should see some extension through the spine and through the hip because as preparation for stepping up. Same thing, you'll see these when on the first step of walking, the person is instantly imbalanced. These are anticipatory changes. <clears throat> and it's more related to dysfunction in the interactions between different structures. Automatic postural responses. Typically in MS, they're late, and it's the feed, proprioceptive feedback loops that are um, 
there's a dysfunction in them and it's your ankle strategy, your hip strategy, your stepping to catch your balance. Um, and so those are usually late, they lead to falls. Sensory orientation, we have to assess all the different sensory systems. We have to look at proprioception, light touch. We need to look at um, vestibular functioning, vision, um, dynamic balance during gait. So then we don't just watch somebody walk 25 feet, turn around and come back. And we have more time than that. So we're turning, we're head turning, we're changing speeds, we're slowing down, we're speeding up, we're doing stairs, we're looking at curbs. We have time to look at all these things. We should look at them all. And then also looking at cognitive impairments and their relation to changes in physical functioning. So look at somebody walking and look at somebody doing a cognitive task while walking and see what happens. Because that's more realistic than walking and talking to a significant other and then your gait slows down and your step length is slow. So those are things. I'm not looking to improve cognition. I'm looking to improve their ability to do a motor task while they do a simple cognitive task. Vestibular functioning. Um, so MS can be a central or a peripheral origin. So we need to distinguish what are the vestibular symptoms and then customize that program as well. Fall risk measures are important and the tug, berg, DGI, and gait speed seem to be the most um, valid and reliable in regards to clinical testing for MS. So a thorough evaluation leads to customization. So we have to look at all those things in order to address all the right areas. So if somebody has difficulty, they have trouble in a grocery store because they have to turn their head a lot and they have to look up and down and they feel imbalanced, that should lead us to check their slow and fast VOR testing. That should lead us to look at dynamic visual acuity. That should lead us to look at whether or not the vestibular ocular reflexes it and then put adaption exercises into place. Same thing with substitution. If somebody has really poor somatic sensation, one, we should educate. You're going to have trouble if you're out in the grass where you can't feel the ground at all you're gonna have more trouble if it's dusk and you're out there. So we should educate about these conditions, these situations that are going to be more problematic to those people. And then <clears throat> vision exercises, proprioceptive exercises, um, conditions that optimize their somatic sensation. Um, sitting balance, we should look at all the same parameters as we look in standing balance. Standing balance and Standing dynamic, there's plenty of testing to look at those. Habituation exercises are important to put in place for your positional person of central origin, even your hypofunctioning vestibular patient, that one side is more impaired than the other. And those are monotonous, and it's hard to get the person to buy into laying down, sitting up six to eight times a day for five to ten reps, and making yourself dizzy, three out of five. So, it's difficult, um, so the first step is getting somebody to know, hey, this can get a little bit better. You can dampen the response to um, those sorts of movements. And then let's not forget about our ambulation exercises. It's not just walking, it's performing walking with tasks. So yes, every person needs to do an, aer an aerobic walking program, but people also need to be able to turn their head while they're walking. They need to be able to turn correctly while they're walking. So we need to identify which specific tasks in walking are difficult and train them. Some additional literature just to look at. Um, it's not published yet. It's uh, coming up. He's from the University of Colorado. It's Jeffrey Herbert. And he has already developed a BEAMS protocol. He has a randomized control trial coming out for people with MS. And it's um, this same idea of customization of balance and um, vestibular programs for the person with MS. Traditionally, the research is not in favor of physical therapy, unsupervised physical therapy um, home programs because the person is not challenged enough. Because we say, oh, it's, it's hard to make somebody lose their balance and me to go home at night and say, I hope they didn't fall at home while they were trying their balance exercises. So we err on the side of safety, so they're holding the counter and they're putting their feet in different positions and I am not losing my balance at all, so I'm not training my balance. So training caregivers to guard, using different, there is a, um, using trekking poles as a transition between holding a counter and nothing. So it's either like you do your balance exercises not holding on or you hold on to a counter. So, but trekking poles are kind of this individual. It still allows for balance reactions and movement and the body's adjusting and the nervous system is working and training. So, um, and then just some references in regards to uh, 
what is out there now with physical therapy literature um, for balance and vestibular training, and then what's kind of newer. Thank you.